We will be talking a bit about AbleChat, which is a, or what we will be talking about is the development of AbleChat, a app to allow people with an uh, intellectual disability to chat with their friends, caregivers, and just their uh, entire social network in general. Who are we? Uh, I'm Steven Solberg. I'm a software engineer. This is Neela Boss, occupational therapist. Uh, we work for Thomas More, um, specifically for KPoint, which is the division that specializes in inclusion, uh, development of software, but basically inclusion in general. Uh, as an introduction um, the, with apps, uh, a big problem, a big challenge for developers and engineers is how to make technology accessible to a broad audience. Um, last decades of the previous century, so roughly 10 to 15 years ago, uh, specific applications were developed, whereas today there's an increasing drive to developing apps that suit a much more broader audience instead of uh, pinpointing a specific audience. Um, this is where universal design and design for all methodologies come into play. Uh, there's a big however, and that big however is that it's not easy to make applications accessible for everyone, even with methodologies uh, such as design for all, user-centered design. There's always something in the way uh, with those kinds of applications, especially apps and websites in particular that use uh, written language as a medium. So people with intellectual disabilities have huge problems dealing with written text, uh, just understanding because of their limited literacy, sk literacy skills. So for this target group, the uh, Able to Include project developed an accessibility layer um, that can be integrated into a lot of future ICT tools. Um, this layer, uh, we're just one of the pilot projects that would be testing this uh, specific layer, which consists of a uh, simple text. So basically, you take text, translate it into more simple, more easy to understand text. A second uh, technology, or rather a second component, is translating text into pictograms. And finally, there's uh, the possibility of translating text into speech. Um, so. This is basically what the application or the accessibility layer does. And the application that we developed, AbleChat, makes use of the text to pictogram component. So this allows users with uh, literacy problems to communicate, communicate with caregivers who then write in plain text and they can just chat with each other uh, through this translation layer. That's the idea. Uh, the end users. We specified people with intellectual disabilities, specifically those who have trouble reading and writing. Uh, they were actively involved in the development process. We used user-centered design, so that makes sense. Uh, and in the testing process of the application. So we always got direct feedback uh, to whether the application was fulfilling their needs. Uh, the app development in several stages. First, we analyzed the context of use to get a, a broad idea of what the users required, what was possible, and what would best suit their needs. Then we came up with a first design solution, just technical details, really, to have a rough uh, prototype that we could test. Uh, then we did a first evaluation of this first design, and we did that iteration three times. So we developed, requested feedback, developed again, more feedback, and that a total of three times. Uh, the requirements have changed quite a bit during the project. Initially, we ha already had um, an app called the Viamigo app, which is the app that um, uh, Christine talked about during the CERA presentation. Um, initially, we wanted to alter this app to um, increment the functionality with the translation layer so users would be able to uh, receive feedback from this application. Um, we decided against that because, um, well, it made for some risky situations. And I will uh, elaborate on that a little bit. 
uh, they didn't have major problems with uh, traveling or VMigo itself, so the application did what it was supposed to do. But when a problem occurred, they would be contacted by their coach instead, not by the application. So the application at that time did not provide any feedback. Uh, we wanted to do that, but we didn't have really have a good idea how to make it uh, clear to the users what was actually happening if the app gave some kind of alarm or information or some extra message. Uh, it was difficult for them as well to imagine what that would look like. Uh, aside from that, it would if they were already confused and we then sent them some kind of message or alarm, it might make a bad situation worse. So we decided against adding the accessibility layer to, to the uh, Viamigo application. Uh, the results of those, um, that's, this is what I just mentioned, I think. Um, yeah, so sending text instead of alarms could be more meaningful. So we decided to go with a application that would function as a standalone app. So no longer only focused on traveling or mobility, but instead functioning as a, a normal communication app uh, akin to WhatsApp, for instance, but then specifically made for people with reading and writing disabilities or uh, problems, sorry. A uh, very important thing here on the bottom, just keep it simple. I think that goes for all software development. Uh, conclusions. It was difficult to specify the needs um, for users for smartphones and for the communication app because they don't they simply didn't have any experience in that uh, in that subject matter uh, even when they were presented they didn't always know exactly what to do so instead as i mentioned before instead of uh, focusing on the mobility app and adding functionality there we decided to focus on empowering people with an intellectual disability and make the uh, general purpose application uh, this is the description for what the app should be doing. Uh, a lot will be clarified by the following um, screenshots. But the rough idea was to allow clients, uh, people with intellectual disabilities, to communicate with uh, caregivers by using pictograms. Um, it should be used on a smartphone. A tablet is also feasible, but a smartphone is just easier to carry in your pocket. Uh, and the, the smartphone app will be used by clients and coaches or caregivers. Um, we also needed something else, with that, which I will be showing you later on. This is what the app would look like after the first development. So on the, uh, the middle screen, you can see what the user would be seeing to communicate. So just a simple uh, overview of pictograms, which they can choose from to compose messages. And then they can be sent by the uh, send button, which is uh, at the moment replaced by a uh, pictogram for an envelope. Text was not a good idea there. Uh, and on the right side, you can see what a conversation would look like from the user's perspective. Now for the coach, it will, would look like this. So the same uh, conversation going on, but the caregiver would instead be composing normal written messages, just normal written text. He could then select from a translation database, uh, namely the beta and sclera pictogram database. So the text could then be translated into uh, the corresponding pictograms. These can be altered later on to uh, make specific messages, but I'm not going to go into that much detail. Uh, bottom line is that both the user and the coach can communicate with each other, but in di very different ways. So the user can just use pictogram language, while the coach can rely on written text and the translation provided by the accessibility layer. Now, I'm going to jump back real quick. Um, the concept that we've used here, namely the buttons in the center of the screen, um, we decided on that quite last minute. Um, because the databases powering those pictograms are quite extensive. It's quite a big database and it would be very complex to put that all into a small interface. So what we decided to do was to make that customizable for each client specifically. And that's why we decided to build a backend website uh, where the caregiver can manage uh, clients that he is connected to, his small network, and he would be able to define pages for specific clients. So this is the a very simple overview, very simple um, page layout. 
for instance, uh, this. This is how you would edit uh, the page layout, how you would determine what buttons would be doing, uh, what text would be matched up with uh, pictograms, um, just to make it customizable to allow every user to learn at their own pace. Uh, we didn't want to overwhelm them. And this is where Nela may continue. So the first design was only presented to coaches and their remarks were mostly about layout and unclear functionalities. For example, they said that the difference um, between sent and received messages was not clear enough because they both had the same background color. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they also said that the sound that indicates a new message has arrived was not loud enough and that the gray send button um, that to send a message was not obvious enough. They also asked if it would be possible for users in the future um, to chat with individual caregivers and uh, their friends. So there came a second design solution where there was a distinction in background colors for sent and received messages. Um, there were added more contrasting colors to important buttons, so all the key elements now have the able to include purple. Um, chatting with other caregivers is scheduled for the next version and the volume for incoming messages is now louder. The second design solution um, was tested in a pilot study with 25 people with intellectual disabilities and their caregivers, and they were linked to six organizations. So at the end of the first pilot round, we asked both coaches and users to evaluate the AbleChat app, and the coaches were asked to fill out a questionnaire based on the app evaluation rubric. The users were asked about their findings to, through a semi-structured interview that determined their experiences and findings about the app. So here you can see the evaluation of the coaches. Um, coaches say that the AbleChat app increases the independence, self-confidence and safety of people with intellectual disabilities. They say that the strength of the app is that it's individually adaptable. They all say that although it's not easy to communicate by only pictograms, it is definitely possible if the meaning of the pictograms is clearly agreed on with the users. The quality of the design of the coach app is generally scored well. The coaches find the app simple, clear and easy no to navigate. Um, but coaches want to be notified when their message is sent and read or when an error has occurred. And they also want a notification of time a message is sent by the user as well. The quality of the design of the user app is scored moderate because coaches say that the layout is not yet simple and clear enough uh, and the app is not uh, yet easy enough to navigate. At first sight, uh, most coaches find the website not user-friendly, but after some training, most of them can use the website independently. And another important remark, uh, coaches say that the use of a smartphone and the use of the app uh, requires many skills of the user. And uh, they say that that aspect should definitely be taken into account when one wants to start using AbleChat. Here you can see the evaluation by the users. Um, the users of AbleChat use the app uh, more than once a week, some of them even every day. Uh, they say they mainly use the app for messages related to work or to independent traveling. They now communicate with their coach, but they also want to communicate with friends, parents and uh, other caregivers. They all manage to send uh, and read messages independently and they all want to continue using the app. So the general conclusions of the second design is that both people with intellectual disabilities and their caregivers are excited about the concept of sending messages using pictograms, but the prototype has the restriction um, that people with intellectual disabilities can only communicate with their coach. So there really is a uh, desire to extend the application and allow sending messages to friends and family. So based on these findings, the final AbleChat uh, app will be designed and this third design solution will be tested and evaluated in a second pilot round. Um, chatting with individual caregivers is possible now. There are added visual indicators for unread messages. There uh, are added timestamps to messages in coach mode and the caregiver can now see what the user is doing or is not using the app or is viewing the list as you can see on picture one or he's uh, viewing the chat, as you can see on picture two, or he's typing a message, as you can see on picture three. So here you can see uh, the user app. It's quite similar to the first version, but at the end you can see a list of received and sent messages with a picture. So that's the picture of the one who has sent the message because it's uh, clearer for the user. Here you can see the coach app. 
So the new AbleChat app um, will be used by 50 people with intellectual disabilities and um, there will be a collaboration with three organizations with 15 to 20 users each. There will be one training session per week with the users, uh, one coach and one researcher. And we will learn the users how to use the smartphone and the app. We will create their own network, their own contact list, and we will ask uh, both the users and the coach to evaluate the app, uh, but also the usability of the app, and we also ask them to take a look at the contribution of, uh, to empowerment of quality of life. So for this purpose, um, one uh, coach or one expert per uh, organization will be trained, because they will also train other caregivers, the user, um, and family. Are there any questions? 